I bet you didn't know that in linguistics, drowning is considered an accomplishment and death is considered an achievement. No, it's not because linguistics is a death cult, although some corners of it are a regular cult cult. Once I was at a conference where they tried to sell me a shirt with my own advisor's face on it. No, thank you. No, instead it's a technical way of talking about verbs and verb phrases that relates to how actions unfold in time. Today, I'm going to talk to you about lexical aspect or action salt. And once you get it, you're going to notice it everywhere. I'm Dr. Taylor Jones, and this is an activity. Uh, this is Language Jones. I just got this totally sweet hoodie in the mail. It is the uh, logo that I've been using for Language Jones, which is a Chinese character, seal script character for Wen, which is both culture and language. And uh, this is also the softest hoodie that I think I've ever worn in my life. Uh, so there's a link below if you want one and uh, you want to be cool like me. Otherwise, you know, you do you. If you've ever studied another language or even just gotten really into grammar, you've probably heard of aspect. It's one of the big things languages do with verbs along with tense and mood. And a lot of what we informally call tenses are actually all about aspect. I actually made a video about it here, so check it out. As a quick refresher, tense is when something happens in time. Aspect, on the other hand, is how we think of the event or action. Do we care about internal structure? Repetition? Is it ongoing? Or is it one undifferentiated thing? Traditionally, we call things perfective if they refer to the entirety of an event and ignore internal structure. I read that book two days ago. That treats the reading of the book as a whole thing. Compare that to imperfective, which does care about how that relates to other events. I was reading that book when I smelled something strange. I think of perfective as a point. It could be a big point. And imperfective is that action being smushed across time. So we can either talk about internal structure. I used to read that book all day. Or other things that happened relative to it. I was reading the book again and the smell got stronger. So far, this is probably not news to most of you. If you've ever studied French, for instance, you've had to deal with the fact that French marks imperfective aspect in the past with the aptly named imparfait, and now marks perfective in the past and the present perfect, a different aspect that refers to things that were completed in the past but are still relevant, with the passé composé. If you studied Russian, you've had to deal with pairs of verbs where a verb is inherently imperfective or inherently perfective. But there's another way of thinking about aspect, and that's lexical aspect. There are different ways of approaching this, but basically we can classify verbs or verb phrases into different categories depending on how the action or event is conceived of. And they're inherent to the word or phrase. So let's start simple. The earliest classification from the spectacularly named Zeno Wendler, fifth Ghostbuster, involved four categories. Activities, accomplishments, achievements, and states. Activities are straightforward. That's things like running or drawing. They're, well, activities. You can use continuous or progressive aspect for them. I am drawing. I am talking. Accomplishments are an activity that has an end point. The technical term is that they're telic. So I'm drawing as an activity, but I'm drawing a square is now an accomplishment. You're doing the activity until you're done doing the activity. I draw until the end point. In this case, finishing the square. Notice how it's the same verb, but we've added a phrase. In this case, an object. I'm drawing a square. And suddenly it's a different lexical aspect. Mind blown. Then you have achievements. They're instantaneous, hence my hook that drowning is an accomplishment. It takes a while, but when it's done, it's done. You can't say, he drowned for a bit, then went about his day. Whereas death is an achievement. You're either alive, a state, or dead, a state. And the transition between those two is basically simultaneous. Although some later linguistic theories complicate this a little bit. Other examples of achievements are words like recognize or find. I somewhat nerdily remember the distinction by thinking about the etymologies of these words. The etymology of achievement is Latin ad caputo, the head, uh, and accomplishment is related to accomplire, to fill up. Then you have states. Not things you actively do, so not activities. Some languages use states where English would use adjectives, so in Zulu, for instance, many English adjectives are verbs. Yejabula is I'm happy, but it's almost more like I'm happying. Bernard Comrie classifies events by whether they're punctual, a point in time, or durative, ongoing. He also groups them by whether they're telic, they have an end point, or don't, uh, and whether they're a state. You can't be both an ongoing state and a single point in time, but what about being a single point of time but not telic? That's where he introduces another category, simulfactive. 
It has nothing to do with scent, even though it sounds like it probably should. Instead, it's repeated punctual actions. Knocking, flapping, bouncing. Suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. That's semifactive. Saying, quoting, nevermore, that's an accomplishment. Remember how I said some later theories complicate things? Well, Moons and Stedman try to look at events kind of like how we look at syllables. A syllable has an onset, a nucleus, which is the vowel, and a coda. An event has a preparatory phase, the culminating event, and the consequent phase, or aftermath. So for them, activities, like jogging, are all warm-up and no event. Maybe that's why I hate jogging. Semifactives, the pitter-patter of that running, are all event, and states, exhaustion, are the aftermath. Accomplishments have everything. You're drowning until you drown, and then you've drowned. And achievements are just event and aftermath. He died. Now he's dead. What's cool about their system is you can think of the same activity in different ways. Gurgling is probably semifactive, but letting out a gurgle is an achievement, as is subsequently expiring. I don't know about you, but I find this stuff fascinating, and it helps me understand not just new words in other languages, but why they behave the way they do. In some languages, semifactives often get a suffix. English, I'm looking at you, twiddling your thumbs. Or they might have reduplication or partial reduplication, like the pitter-patter of little feet I mentioned earlier. In many languages, states that English represents with adjectives are state of verbs. Mandarin, Zulu, I'm looking at you. And some otherwise weird stuff is immediately explained, like why je savais, uh, no in the imperfect in French is I knew, but j'ai su, no in the passé composé is I found out. Passé composé is inherently not imperfect. But what does it mean to know, but not as an ongoing state? Find out sounds about right to me. If you like what I'm doing with the channel, please like and subscribe. Maybe even leave a comment below for the algorithm. I have a Patreon with more exclusive content coming soon, including live chats. And if you like this video, you'll probably like this one. Thanks to my patrons Beck S, Spanish Input, Peter Kolb, Sarah Shaw, Tattoon, Blake, Dylan Harvick, Anders Torgerson, my All Access patron David Hader, uh, and congratulations, by the way, and my VIP patrons Johnny Childress and Paul H. Until next time, may you achieve and accomplish all the states you want in life.